Who is a liar but he that denieth that Yahusha is the Messiah? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. 1 John 2.22 One of the greatest gifts ever given was coming to learn that certain individuals were praying for me before I came to Torah. They knew me, they knew my research, but I didn't know Torah as something applicable to my life. And they were praying that I would come to the truth, which I did. I'll tell you, there were tears in my eyes to learn that their prayers were answered. Praise Yah. Over this year, many people have stated the same. They've been praying for me while I went down the hound trail of calling Paul out. And I am so grateful for those prayers. Those prayers deserve consideration. You're familiar with Paul, right? The 13th Apostle. At the risk of angering a certain portion of my audience, there is so much rotten fruit among those who deny Paul. Well, that's not entirely true. There are solid brothers in the faith who love truth but deny Paul. My ministry partner is one of them. I'm not addressing those with good fruit. This is not an attack against their convictions. I can only speak from my own and also warn. So let me rephrase this. Rotten fruit is contagious. If you need this put into a familiar phrase, then the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I finally see where the road leads and what so many have warned me about. The hound trail continues on and it crosses a point of no return. Messiah denial. Yah darkens the eyes of those who choose to leave. It was only one year ago that I came out against Paul. If I could hit the reset button and do it all again, I would. In that brief jaunt, I have never witnessed so many people in one lifetime turn away from Yahusha HaMashiach or pleaded with those who make a silly game of it as if Messiah is a golden calf and this is the next thing. Make that two or three lifetimes. The spirit of Antichrist is everywhere, and it scares breakfast, lunch, and dinner out of me. After rejecting Messiah, they then turn their gaze in an accusatory tone towards Torah. They are afterwards left to their own despair, fumbling around for a light switch in the dark, and asking themselves, What is truth? Though unknowingly, I had a part in it. For that, I am truly sorry. My heart is broken. And so, putting on the brakes, I am having a very difficult time seeing how the Ruach is part of it. This is cause for reevaluation. A second matter which will be addressed here is the matter of sin. As you hopefully know by now, sin is a transgression of the law. The Father has convicted me. Of breaking Torah? Yes. I believe so. I've repented of it, and he's brought me shalom. As part of my turnaround, I have taken down every single article, podcast, and YouTube video which focuses upon Paul as a false apostle. It's not that I've necessarily changed my views on Paul. The method of delivery, however, was wrong. For better clarity, we'll cover some of that. Meanwhile, I've looked into the abyss and I've stood on the slippery slope and I know where it leads. All I can do now is plead. They have mostly fallen on deaf ears. Here at the Unexpected Cosmology, I hold as a theme verse Revelation 14.12. Whenever I invite in a guest writer, they're expected to sign off on it. If they're an administrator on my channel, they're expected to as well. It's how I make sure we're all on the same page. Revelation 14.12 states, Here is the perseverance of the saints who keep the commandments of Elohim and their faith in Yahusha. From this, we can glean the following. The perseverance of the saints is defined as those who, one, keep the Father's commands, and two, keep their faith in Yahusha, or you might even say, the testimony of Yahusha. Several chapters over, we learn that these two key points are qualifiers for those who remain written in the Book of Life. Also, Satan is at war with them. Isn't that interesting, how you can only be scrubbed from the book? Revelation 14.12 is the qualifier of whether or not you pass or fail the test. As the creator and editor-in-chief or whatever, that's all I'm asking. 
If you want to write conspiratorial or truther-based articles, or scripture-based articles, or simply be a benefit to the community, then pursue the Father's commands and declare the testimony of Yahusha. Really, it shouldn't be too much to expect, and yet it is. Last week, I had to remove almost every single administrator from my channel. I had to remove my sometimes editor. I even had to remove my co-writer. And unless things change, I no longer feel confident sharing his work. Why? Because for whatever reason, holding the community and my contributors to a very simple standard that Yahusha is the son of Elohim was too overbearing. Here's some of the responses that I was told. By asking that they keep the faith in Yahusha as contributors to the community, I was censoring the truth and stifling their investigation. I was dropping a grenade. Also, I would regret my actions. It was total mutiny. What I have witnessed over the last few months, here and in so many other places, is the spirit of Antichrist. 1 John 2.22 The falling away is very real and it's not a game. And I've never experienced anything like this before. I'm 40 years old. I grew up in the church, pastor's kid, parsonage. And no matter what ministry I've been a part of, I've never seen anything like this where almost everybody I'm working with can suddenly no longer confess Yahusha is Adonai with their lips. I have had several people approach me afterwards who watched that episode unfold and tell me that they too have never experienced anything like that. One individual stated that it was nothing short of a spell being cast. There are more details to highlight that very real possibility, and in time, I may share them. Call me whatever name you want. Call me Orwellian censorship. You can go down any back alley or drainage pipe and dig for your anti-Messiah information. But I'm not bringing wolves into the sheepfold through this outlet. I won't do it. I will burn the unexpected cosmology down to the ground and start again if it means having a brother or two in the faith who won't stand there while a wolf devours the sheep and says, Nah, we're just testing all things. Wait, what? Understand... I'm not telling this story to pull the focus away from myself through the flogging of others. Rather, I blame myself. My accusatory nature towards Paul has attracted a certain spirit. But it wasn't until this particular episode when I finally connected the dots. Therefore, I am pleading with the community, don't do this. Don't deny Messiah. Don't follow those who are leading you into a considerate anti-Messiah investigation like lambs to the slaughter. Don't allow yourself to be seduced by the spirit of Antichrist. If you so wish, the darkness will become light to you. Remember your first love. Remember who it is that brought you to the truth. And then remember the following words. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Matthew 10.32 Here's a couple of important anti-Paul observations that I've uncovered over the last year. You know, the tricks of the trade, and it's time you learned of them. Many in the anti-Paul crowd will claim, I am being unfair. They will tell you that not everyone goes from denying Paul to dethroning Messiah. And though they would be correct, I mean, I haven't denied Messiah, they are also attempting to deflect your attention away from the disease, hoping that it shrivels up on its own. They need to deal with it, and yet, they won't. So much apathy. And so far, I have only encountered barricades of excuses, mental gymnastics. Therefore, everyone is dutifully warned. As part of my continued investigation into Paul, I was a member of an anti-Paul group on Facebook. And then one day it occurred to me that certain prominent members were also anti-Messiah. When an administrator finally came out with her anti-Messiah views, I immediately pulled the plug. I didn't want anything to do with that sort of association, much less hanging with those individuals who felt it mattered little. Anyhow, my first question was, why would someone who's against Yahusha still be concerned with Paul? They wouldn't. Unless, that is, they're using Paul as a gateway drug. I mean, nobody starts out on crack cocaine, right? Knowing that someone has a resentment towards Paul, they're then able to introduce the person to the next thing. Last week, the golden calf was Paul. Tomorrow, 
it is Yahusha, you see. From there, this spiral only continues. Just wait until next month. They stand around watching you, like those alligators in my backyard, just waiting on their catch of the day. Upon closer investigation, I started finding that some of those same anti-Paw individuals with anti-Messiah beliefs had also gone so far as to question or totally dismiss the Torah. Such beliefs may have originally been rooted in the Nazarene Acts, and if so, the very book that pulled them away from trusting Torah is no longer applicable because it was messianic literature. Ironic, right? But that then begs the next question. If they've already thrown Torah into question, why are they still pushing the anti-Paul agenda? You probably already know the answer. Because they're laying out breadcrumbs, ultimately leading their catch of the day towards a rejection of all truth. Revelation 14.12 Is this not the definition of a wolf? A wolf devours the sheep and scatters the flock. And the man who has no right playing the part of a shepherd proves himself to be the hireling and flees. Going public, confessing where I've screwed up, and then being emotionally vulnerable about it is never easy. It's like opening up a chink in your armor and then waving across the field at the archers. So let's recognize the obvious. There's a lot of people angry with me right now on both sides of the argument. Do I wish they weren't? Most certainly. I wish I could settle upon something that makes everyone happy, but you and I know that's never going to happen. There are people whom I truly care about, people whom I call friend, who still will not answer the phone and speak with me ever since coming out against the letters of you-know-who last April. I mourn their losses, but hold no grudges for their decisions. They had reasons for setting those defining boundaries, perhaps good reasons, and I crossed them. I'm not trying to pat myself on the butt here. Rather, I am morally responsible for my words, actions, and agendas. People deserve to know where I believe I've erred, and also to be warned. I certainly hope the anti paul crowd is correct, and confident enough to stake their very souls on their claims, because I can no longer do that. The testimony against Paul is very severe. It should therefore be noted that the penalty of false witness against another brother is equally serious. Here's what Torah says. And the judges shall make careful inquiry. And indeed, if the witness is a false witness who has testified falsely against his brother, then you shall do to him as he thought to have done to his brother. So you shall put away the evil from among you. Deuteronomy 19, 18 through 19. Do I want the same penalty directed at Paul? Hell no. Another troubling observation I've had over the last several months is that, while I worked so diligently to prove the 12 disciples were writing against you-know-who, I began to notice that they never once mentioned him by name. Isn't that interesting? Rather than playing the part of the accuser, the disciples warn the assembly against false doctrine, and there is a world of difference. I don't want to play the part of the accuser to the brethren. That's Satan's job. It is playing the part of the accuser, which often turns from Paul to Yahusha, and then the Torah. See how that works? The accuser is at war with the saints. It's why I've been spending the last two weeks calling up different ministries and asking that they forgive me for any part I played in frustrating them. From this point forward, I have no desire to teach from Paul nor read from Paul until everything can be settled. If I am to take the disciples' example, doctrine can be pointed out without naming the man, the unexpected cosmology will therefore test his writings, as all scripture should be tested, but will not take part in slandering a man who claims to uphold Torah. Meanwhile, I would rather sigh heavily among a community of people who read Paul and love Yahusha by keeping his father's commands than the alternative. It's not worth the pain and the suffering that I've seen. The sheer number of children indiscriminately playing a game of hot potato with a blazing stick of dynamite will equally show that there's absolutely no peace in their life as they no longer savor, or perhaps never yet discovered, the joy of the truth. If you happen to be among the anti-Paul crowd and my apology upsets you or throws your shalom out of balance, then I kindly ask that you take it to prayer and consider subscribing to somebody else's work. My apologies go out to every person in Torah ministry 
which I have frustrated or hampered over the last year because of this issue. It's not like I wasn't warned. You were right, and I was wrong. To you, I offer shalom.